My name is Meredith Cheatwood and I'm from Norfolk, Virginia. The story detailed in the portfolio I'm sharing tonight began after I graduated from Wake Forest University in North Carolina and decided to move across the country to Seattle. I planned to become a working artist while holding a retail job at Artist and Craftsman Supply. Soon after moving, I went searching for a secondary source of income and took on a night job bartending. This immediately compromised many of my personal, professional, and creative goals. During that period, I developed serious issues with alcohol dependency, which resulted in many traumatic, traumatic life-threatening experiences. After staying there for over a year, I've recently returned home for an interim period, during which I have focused on my recovery from substance abuse, as well as improving my awareness of my deteriorated mental health. The portfolio I've come to call Departing Through the Exit Wound describes my struggles with drugs and alcohol, bipolar disorder, and post-traumatic stress while living in Seattle, and explores the progress of my recovery once I return to Virginia. So this one is called Anatomical Study of Trauma and Healing. This piece was created in January after I was discharged from a rehabilitation center outside of Richmond and was the catalyst for rediscovering my love for art and its therapeutic benefits. I realized art making was an essential part of myself that I had been stifling for an alarming amount of time and the results are never good when creative power is stifled. I was learning that my lashing out and self-destructive behaviors were directly linked to my feelings of inadequacy and expressing myself and my emotions and furthermore validating them as, accessible, as acceptable parts of who I was. This piece was tedious and time consuming, but the subject matter I chose was intentional. As I traced the lines of a rib cage that had been broken, but was once again reinforced, I myself began to follow the same patterns in the way I approached my trauma and unresolved emotions of shame and guilt. And next slide. Um, continued study of trauma and healing. After completing anatomical study, I knew for certain that art was the outlet I needed in order to carry myself out of my life's all time low. In this piece, I went through all of the photographs I had taken throughout my time in Seattle and selected any that still made me feel sadness, happiness, nostalgia, or regret. I printed them in monochrome and collaged them over two canvases. On top, I contoured what I considered to be my most significant symbols in active addiction, the darts, the stars, the X's, handcuffs, and a roaring tiger's teeth. I placed them on top of my bookshelf where I could see them clearly from my bed. Initially, this was an exercise in trying to condition myself out of having relapses, but even after I've become stable, I've decided that I like them there. Next slide. This piece is titled, I Wish I Had Never Seen Your Face. This is another example of a work that tries to tease out the genuine danger of addiction and mental health disorders, as well as their proliferation in an increasingly apathetic society. This was a direct study with alcohol as its subject, especially how candidly it is abused in the bartending and bar attending social scenes. Next slide. The loudest cry. Perhaps one of my greatest traumas was spending time in jail, where my spiritual and mental confines became overbearingly physical. The first time I attempted this piece was an, immediately after being released, and I was abusing substances heavily while working on it. The end result was a failure because I had once again smothered my ability to process and heal creatively with toxins that I had taught myself to rely on for emotional relief. It was a very painful piece to return to, and when I did, I added minimal modifications. I wanted to preserve the terrified hopelessness that prevailed in the original composition. Although the collection of works aims to speak toward re regrowth and forward progress, I included the loudest cry because to eliminate it would be to succumb to feelings of denial, shame, and regret for the past. Next slide. Target practice. My use of commonplace materials such as markers, stickers, or crayons gives off many of my work give, gives many of my works an unpretentious down-to-earth feel. In this piece, I have included lipstick, highlighter, and Sharpie. This image, as well as a later slide, I was only lying when I said I was okay, was built directly on top of old drunken drawings in my sketchbook. I don't want the portfolio to feel distant and inaccessible. I want it to feel like it could have been anyone's story made in whatever notebook or materials they happen to have on hand. The materials I've chosen though naturally have a deeper significance. Next slide. This piece is titled, The Path to Recovery is Marked by Little Gold Stars. 
This is perhaps the best example of how I've treated the incorporated collage elements as physical artifacts pulled directly from the time I spent in Seattle. I layer them here as visual field notes, demonstrative of my process of sifting through memories and emotions, a process that is accelerated through the act of constructing a work of art. This is what I discovered when I first started the rib cage for anatomical study. Next slide. I was only lying when I said I was okay. In many of the works, I utilize a bright color palette. When I plan compositions in my head, I often saw them in dark tones or muted grays, but I found when I started working on them, colors that had more luminosity were the ones I reached for. They felt more pressing and urgent. The energetic compositions similarly demand the viewer's attention and emphasize there is something in the work that deserves their time and focus. This also assists with the receptivity of the work, because not only do I want to create something that is emotionally charged, but I want something that is bearable to look at. If I created this portfolio and decided that I would rather have it shut away somewhere, then I failed. The fact that I'm proud of these pieces, that I want to show them to others, have them out on my walls, means that I'm that much more willing to accept their subject matter as a real part of myself. Next slide. This piece is called Psyche and Chains. I intentionally pair extremely raw subject matter with familiar, safer images such as stars and cartoon doodles. The tiger teeth had made their second appearance here, which is no coincidence. One of the few paintings I attempted while living in Seattle was based off a photograph of a wall design I'll, I took while in a carnival themed bar. I wanted to develop a metaphor about how the experiences of my life had begun feeling like circus acts. I never ended up painting anything on the canvas except for a few red stripes in the background and the tiger's teeth. When I moved out, I left the incomplete painting behind. Initially, I had pictured the tiger's face struggling to burst free from behind bars, but here I brought the teeth to the forefront to deliver a different message. Embracing the tiger side of me will bring me liberation, whereas repressing undesirable parts of myself or upholding a meek and tamed persona, one where I try to select which parts will show, that is what keeps me confined, a ghost-shaped contour of all I could discover and come to be. Next slide. Chain-linked curiosities. I liked the idea I developed in my trauma collages where I identified the main symbol of my past life, main symbols of my past life, and brought them to the forefront of the composition. I thought back to the cabinets of curiosities that the old artists used to paint as a way of bolstering their intelligence and skill as well as show off the trinkets of their travels. Well, here I'm showing off the trinkets of my trauma. Looking at any of these objects still brings me pain, but that's part of who I am today. I pulled out these strands of myself and acknowledged them one by one in visual form. Next slide. An emergency dial. Beyond the primary focus of substance abuse and mental illness, the works annotate the survival of abusive relationships, creative standstills, instances of sexual assault, identity issues, and abandonment by loved ones. Because I had used my art as a media for my recovery, I realized it was my responsibility to extend what I had learned to those around me by presenting the works that had carried me through the process. Therefore, rather than simply standing as an autobiographical collection, the works intend to empathize with anyone who has at a time found themselves displaced or disenfranchised by exterior forces they can neither control nor understand. I have accentuated a running theme of healing and regrowth to impress upon viewers that there is always hope for reclaiming our temporarily lost selves, and in doing so, becoming ever more reinforced as individuals. However, the progress made in recovery cannot be applauded without acknowledging the suffering that brought it to fruition. For this reason, I titled the portfolio Departing Through the Exit Wound. Though the worst of my trials have passed, and though I have come a long way since, I must never forget my origin. Uh, thank you so much, Meredith. Does anybody have any questions? Hi, Meredith. I'm Michelle. I'm going to speak after you, um, which I don't really relish after listening to your talk. Um, <laughs> thank you for sharing your very powerful story and being um, open with us about how it all came to be. I admire your strength in doing that. Thank you. I had a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I had a question. Um, I too was uh, very moved by your story, Meredith. 
and I was just hoping that you could talk a little bit about your working process. Uh, when you start out doing a piece, are you uh, thinking of your work in an addition or do you do one of a kind? So if you could just share with us uh, your art making process with, with how you're uh, integrating that with your healing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, usually it starts out really small, like um, let's say Psyche and Chains, for instance, the one on the purple. Um, that was just a, a piece of colored paper that I had long ago um, thrown some blue lines over. And something about it, I, I just, um, I felt like emotional about it and I wanted to use it. So um, I just worked on top of that. Uh, I kept adding more layers um, and somehow I knew it was time to stop. But, but usually it starts out like that where I'll, I'll find something. Um, like I, I saw the image of, of a rib cage um, and I wanted to use that somehow um, or the telephone in the very last one, I was in a hotel um, uh, shortly after rehab, I think, and I saw the telephone in the lobby and I like stopped and photographed it. I, I don't know, I just see something in the foundation and then um, um, it's generally a lot of walking away and coming back to pieces. Um, and there's a lot of layers, um, I, sometimes too many. <laughs> but, but I, I think, I guess in, in terms of my healing, I look at a piece when I'm making it and I try to think about like, what's like relevant in this case, like what's relevant to me? Like what, what did it really have to do with my narrative? Um, and a lot of times that's where the symbols came in. Like I was like, well, you know, what, what kind of image would I add to this piece that would make it more of like my story? Um, and so a lot of them have like repeated images. Um, but what I like the most is that it's always a process of refinement. Like I, I never just throw down something and it's done. Um, yeah, I like that I have to almost like I have to jeopardize the piece like every time I add something and I'm like this could really ruin it but in the end that's what makes it you know right I totally get that I really I really was moved by the piece with the rib cages with the pieces that were uh that they, they were looked like they were not natural inside of a natural uh, structure of the body and then behind what really struck me was behind the rib cage and the uh, the part that was natural and the part that there was some kind of deformity there there was a mirror as if it was reflecting out to the viewer as well as to um the person you creating the work so uh i i really like how it, it reflected back out at the viewer because i i think that and I think in some ways, all of us need to heal certain parts of our yeah. lives. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to uh, share with you my reaction to that particular Great. piece. You. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah.